welcome back to our subject, Law Enforcement Organization and Administration. Once again, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. And uh, yours uh, trolley is Darlito Bernard Gidlizo, known as Sir D or Tata D or Dr. D. So in this particular uh, video, our discussion uh, is focused on the Department of National Defense or the DND and the Department of Transportation or the DOTR and uh, to discuss the uh, mandates of uh, these uh, two agencies insofar as uh, law enforcement is concerned. So uh, at the end of this uh, lecture, the uh, viewers or the uh, learners are expected to be able to uh, distinguish or differentiate the mandate of the DND from uh, the DOTR and to identify what are the uh, sectoral agencies and the attached agencies under the DND and the DOTR. So uh, the Department of National Defense. The DND has always been relied upon to guard the country against external, take note against external. However, it may also include internal threats. Okay, that's why they are involved, actively involved in the counterinsurgency operation of the government. In fact, the DND is the primary mover of the, uh, uh, the national task force to end local uh, insurgency, okay, or communist insurgency. So, uh, ito yung uh, mainit ngayon na usapin na ginagawa ng DND uh, na magbigay ng development sa mga rural areas, particularly sa mga remote areas, to counter the uh, New People's Army or to counter the propaganda of the uh, CPP NPA. Kaya kasama rin sila sa external threats. Although, primarily, this should be for the external threats. And that is uh, to national peace and security and to promote the welfare of soldiers and veterans and provide support for social and economic development. Okay, so uh, kaya kinikwestiyonan yung uh, AFP bakit daw sila ang pumapasok sa mga rural areas to implement and to enforce uh, the laws of the land uh, doon sa mga rural areas or sa mga remote barangays. Well, practically, uh, unang-una para mapalayo or mapalayas yung mga insurgents, uh, mga insurgents doon at uh, pangalawa para mabantayan yung mga uh, tinatawag nating social and economic development na ginagawa ng gobyerno sa mga lugar na yon. Okay, so that is the Department of National Defense. So hindi lamang siya patungkol sa mga gera, but rather uh, meron silang tinatawag ng mga civil-military operations also. Just like in the PNP, meron silang uh, uh, police community relations uh, programs or activities. The DND is uh, created by uh, Commonwealth Act number no. 21 of December uh, or number no. 1 of December 21 1935 it was known or it is known as the National Defense Act and it created the Council of National Defense that is to advise the president on all matters pertaining to national defense policy and for the Commonwealth Act number no. 430 of May 1 9, uh, May 31 1939 before World War II uh, as implemented by Executive Order 230, uh, the uh, Council of National Defense was then renamed or created into the Department of National Defense. And by virtue of Executive Order 94, after World War II, on October 4, 1947, the uh, DND was charged with the duty of supervising the National Defense Program of the country. In other words, yung mga armed forces of the uh, Philippines natin, no? na siya ngayon ang pinaka-supervising agent ng ating uh, government. The Office of the Civil the Defense, the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, and the National Defense College of the Philippines, and the government are spinal. So, yun ang mga attached agencies ng uh, Department of National Defense. Uh, the DND, uh, kasama yan ng ating uh, NBI, ng ating uh, Philippine National Police in the enforcement also. So say for example, if the the NBI or the PDEA or the PNP will, uh, we call it issue a warrant or uh, will uh, 
uh, we call it uh, uh, issue a warrant of arrest or uh, they are going to uh, uh, we call it to uh, to effect a warrant of arrest sa mga rebelde or sa mga kabundukan or sa mga areas kung saan very high risk ang uh, insurgency area then the uh, uh, we call it the armed forces of the Philippines uh, help in a very active role sa uh, ganung bagay no just like in the Mamasapano incident uh, nandun lang sa surrounding yung uh, yung army at saka marines okay na pag kinakailangan yung tulong ay pupunta sila para matulungan yung PNP na mag-effect ng uh, warrant of arrest. Ganon din ang PDEA. No? Kaya may active participation ang uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines natin insofar as the enforcement of laws. Particularly sa mga areas na mataas ang insurgencies and even sa high seas na kung saan hindi, lang kaya, hindi kaya ng ating Philippine Coast Guard or ng ating uh, maritime uh, police. So same thing, you know, uh, lahat ng mga yan ay in a way or another nag, na involved sila sa mga enforcement ng uh, ating mga special uh, laws. No? Particularly yung uh, enforcement ng batas ng sovereignty natin sa ating uh, bansang Pilipinas. So let's go now to the uh, Department of Transportation. Well, the Department of Transportation was formerly known as the Department of Transportation and Communication. Okay, let's find out why it became uh, the uh, Department of Transportation, not the DOTC. But first thing first, what is the mandate? Meaning, ano yung, uh, uh, yung mandatory na trabaho ng DND or DOT, DOTR, insofar as... Uh, um, enforcement is concerned. So the primary or uh, the mandate is uh, they are the uh, primary policy, planning, programming, coordinating, and implementing an administrative entity of the executive branch of the government, meaning the president, on the promotion, on the development and regulation of a dependable and coordinated network of transportation systems as well as in the fast, safe, efficient, and reliable transportation services. So in uh, transportation management or in traffic management, the major aspect of uh, transportation management or uh, traffic management is the law enforcement service. No? So kinakailangan yan. So maraming batas, anything connected to air transport, anything connected to uh, marine transport, and to land transport, more or less, ang pinakamother agency niyan is yung Department of Transportation. And of course, there are sectoral agencies and attached agencies to this uh, department. So, uh, Republic Act 10844, Section 15 in particular, Paragraph A6, it created the Department of Information and Communications Technology, the DICT. Uh, Therefore, tinanggal yung communication sa DOTR. So with that, all the operating units of the DOTC, just like uh, say yung uh, national telecommunications and others, with functions and responsibilities dealing with communications are abolished and their powers and functions, applicable funds and appropriations, record, equipment, property, and personnel transferred to the DITC or DICT. So it was renamed the DOTC to DOTR. Para sa DOTR ay purely transportation na lang. Okay? Kasi, uh, kailangan mag-create ng panibagong uh, DICT because of the uh, advent of technology, computer technology, communication technology that we have today, at hindi na kayang uh, i-regulate lahat yan at enforce lahat yan ng DOTR. So, masyadong malawak na yung magiging scope ng DOTC kung hindi yan gagawa ng separate na uh, tinatawag natin department for purposes of information communica and communications technology. Executive Order Number 125A, amending Executive Order Number 125, entitled Reorganizing the Ministry of Transportation and Communications. That was the time of Marcos, the time of the president, uh, the former president Marcos. So, nag-great sila ng Ministry of Transportation and Communication, na naging DOTC nung panahon ni Cory Aquino. Okay, it reorganized the Ministry of Transportation and Communications and it defines all the powers and functions and for other purposes. Na? 
uh, you have the executive order number 546 still during the time of uh, president marcos it created the ministry of public works and ministry of transportation and communication so medyo uh, nagkakaroon ng overlapping no the function of the mtc now okay is the policy formulation industry services regulation infrastructure development and international cooperation and take note the uh, Ministry of Public Works, which is known today as the Department of Public Works and Highways, sila ngayon ang mga, uh, sila ngayon ang nagre-recommend at nag install ng mga traffic enforcement uh, uh, signage. No? So, yung mga traffic laws natin or mga traffic signs natin, ang DPWH, ang uh, primary agency na naglalagay doon because sila ang nakakaalam kung uh, ano ang nararapat sa isang portion ng highway. So, sila ang naglalagay noon. And the police officers in the LTO, sila lamang ang nag enforce or nag -apprehend. So, may connection yung DPWH sa enforcement ng batas trafico natin or batas transportation natin. Because, say for example, only the engineers know kung gaano ang maximum capacity ng isang kalsada or ng isang bridge. So, sila ang naglalagay kung ilang tons ang limit ng isang kalsada. So, in a way, involved sila sa enforcement sa ng transportation, particularly in the land transportation. So, uh, what are the sectoral agencies? Ito yung, uh, pag sinabi natin sectoral agencies, may mga tatlong uh, sector sa transportation natin. Okay? The, uh, uh, the air, the maritime, and the land. However, na, uh, dito sa DOTR natin, nakafocus lang sila doon sa land transport natin saka sa maritime transport natin. Kasi yung sa aviation, uh, yan ay babagsak na mga attached agencies. So, under the land transportation, dalawa yan. Kasi mas marami ang uh, gumagamit ng land transportation sa Pilipinas as compared to maritime transport and to uh, air transport. So, you have the, uh, the uh, land transportation office and the... Uh, uh, land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board. And on the maritime transport, you have uh, under that is the Philippine Coast Guard. Okay? So the uh, Land Transportation Office is a sectoral agency of the Department of Transportation by virtue of Executive Order Number 125 and 125 as uh, mentioned okay, during the time of uh, uh, President Cory Aquino. And later on, okay, uh, Further reorganized by virtue of Executive Order Number 226 again in 1997. So under the Land Transportation Office, ano yung rule niya doon sa enforcement? Well, dalawa yan. No? Uh, mayroon yung tinatawag nating Law Enforcement Service. Nandiyan yung mga tinatawag yung mga flying squad. Then uh, part of enforcement is the adjudication. So they have the Traffic Adjudication Service. If you are in the region, you call them the ARTAS or the Regional Traffic adjudication service. So, doon naglalaro yung uh, trabaho ng land, for, land transportation insofar as uh, uh, enforcement is concerned. However, okay, uh, they are also, or the land transportation also is the primary agency that uh, enforces uh, the Republic Act 4136 and all and other uh, major uh, transportation or traffic uh, uh, laws in the country. So, uh, the uh, LTO, uh, they promote the safety and comfort of the traveling public with respect to motor vehicles by enforcing, okay, by enforcing uh, the proper registration, the proper uh, inspection of motor vehicles, okay, the issuances of licenses to uh, motor, dri uh, motor vehicle drivers as well as conductors, okay, so in-enforce nila yung batas trafico as set forth by RA 4136, the collection of fines and penalties for motor vehicle, and apprehension and adjudication of traffic violators and the enforcement of Republic Act 4136. So, uh, malaking bahagi ng enforcement ang trabaho ng uh, Land Transportation Office. Okay? Because lahat ng lugar sa Pilipinas ay mayroong kalsada. At habang may kalsada, mayroong sasakyan. At habang may sasakyan, mayroong batas na sumasaklaw sa kanila and yung Land Transportation Office ang pinaka-primary office to do that job. And of course, the PNP the SPG as well as uh, the uh, local government uh, traffic uh, management services are uh, also uh, deputized by the LTO insofar as 
enforcement of the Republic Act 4136 is concerned. So what about the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board? Okay, so franchising and regulatory. So if you would like, no, kung gusto mong uh, mag-business ng transportation, oh, that is a business, meron kang uh, registration yan. Mariregulate yan. Hindi basta-basta na may sakyang ka ay uh, pwede mo nang ipasada. Kailangan yan, makakuha ka ng franchise, okay? makakuha ka ng uh, authority to operate and uh, mariregulate yan. May regulation. Ano yung mga bawal, ano yung mga hindi pwede na pampasadang sakyan. So it was created by uh, an executive order in June 19, 1987 to simplify Simplify the land transportation industry, so yung business ng land transportation. Since the creation of the LTFRB, the issuance of, uh, issue of franchises or for land transport operators has become more stringent, resulting in higher safety standards for the land travel. No? Kasi pag wala, hindi ma-regulate yan, uh, tawag natin ay delikado ang kalsada. May mga rolling coffins na tinatawag natin. So before uh, you can get a franchise or makapag-renew ka ng franchise mo, ay magkakaroon ng ocular inspection yung motor vehicle. Titignan nila lahat yan kung pasado yan at sumusunod yan sa traffic law. Okay? Otherwise, hindi ka isyuhan ng, ng franchise to operate your motor vehicle as a public transport. And of course, technical evaluation uh, stop, or the technical evaluation stop of the LTFRB ensure the operating and safety standards of commercial and private vehicles Okay, are observed prior to the issue once operating franchises. That is on the area of motor vehicle inspection. Okay, para makita nila kung talagang uh, safe yung mga sasakyan na yan. So, let's move on sa marine transport. Ang pinaka-primary agency dyan na nag-enforce uh, uh, ng uh, mga overloading and other violations sa marine transport is the Philippine Coast Guard. Okay, so the Philippine Coast Guard was uh, taken out from the Philippine Navy. Of course, the next lesson for this one will be focused on the Philippine Coast Guard. So, uh, we will not be discussing comprehensively ano ang Philippine Coast Guard in this uh, video. So, uh, the, uh, the mandate or uh, the general description of the Philippine Coast Guard is that it is an armed and uniform. Armed and uniform. So, it's a paramilitary unit. Meron silang armas at nakainiforme. Just like the law enforcement service of the LTO. They are also armed and uniform. So, they are uh, primarily tasked. Uh, with enforcing all applicable laws within the Philippine waters, particularly the interior waters, uh, conducting maritime security operations, safeguarding of life and property at sea, and protecting the marine environment and resources. Sir, hindi ba ito nag-overlap uh, nag sa, sa PNP? Hindi siya nag-overlap. Actually, uh, they work together. No? They are interdependent with one another. Okay? And so, because normally, saan nga mang gagaling yung mga saan nga manggagaling yung mga violators ng dagat? Sa lupa. At nandun yung mga polis sa lupa. So somehow, eh, uh, dapat uh, meron ding uh, uh, police maritime okay? group ng Pilipinas for that purpose para merong ka katulong ang Philippine Coast Guard in the enforcement of uh, laws within the Philippine waters. So what are the ATATS agencies? Okay? So ATATS meaning they work together. They are not necessarily under the uh, the OTR, okay? So you have the Office of the Transportation Security, and uh, you have the Civil Aviation uh, Agencies, and you have the Road Road Transport Agencies. So what are those? The uh, ATAT agencies. Okay, uh, you have the uh, under the Civil uh, Aviation, okay, and you have the Road Transport, and you have the maritime transport. So, under them, okay, ay marami pang mga other agencies that support the uh, mandate of the DOTR in the enforcement of all transportation laws in the land, in the air, in and in the sea. First, you have the Office for Transportation Security. It is the single authority responsible for the security of the transportation system of the country. Okay, just like uh, in the civil aviation, the sea transport and maritime infrastructure, land transportation, rail system, and infrastructure. Okay, so sila ngayon yung tinatawag natin nagpo-provide ng security personnel. 
to enforce also the safety uh, uh, laws or safety measures okay, for these transportation facilities created by virtue of Executive Order 277 in response to the international mandates, okay? calling for a single authority for all modes of transportation securing okay, or security in the Philippines. Okay, and Executive Order 311 was issued on April uh, 26, 2004 for this Office for Transportation Security. Sila yung mga nandun sa mga airports, sa mga seaport, okay? Ayan, or sa mga rail system, sila yung mga in-charge yan. Now, under the uh, Civil Aviation, we have the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines or the CAAP. So, they implement the policies on civil aviation in order to ensure safe, economical, and efficient air travel sa mga commercial flights. Okay? So, sila ang in charge yan. And of course, uh, meron din silang independent regulatory body. Meaning, sila yung mga nag approve ng permit ng mga involved sa civil aviation. At meron silang quasi-judicial and quasi-legislative power. Pag sinabi mong quasi-judicial, so, sila yung meron silang uh, uh, nagtatry sila or uh, sila yung naghihearing kung may mga violation sa civil uh, aviation. Okay, so ganun din ang LTO, meron din siyang quasi-judicial yung traffic adjudication service nila. Sila ang naghihiring sa mga violators. Now, uh, meron din silang quasi-legislative power, meaning ang CAAP ay may authority rin na mag-set forth ng mga uh, tinatawag nating memorandum circulars or mga special laws uh, for the purpose or in line to the mandate of the CAAP. And the CAAP is mandated to set comprehensive, clear, and impartial rules and regulation for the Philippine aviation industry. What about the Manila International Airport Authority? Okay, so uh, maraming batas sa airport natin. At ang pinaka-overall in charge sa MIA ay yung MIAA. Okay? Created under Executive Order 778. It provides safe, efficient, and reliable airport facilities for international domestic travel at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. And uh, it is also tasked with promoting NAIA as a center for international trade and tourism. So, sila na tumitingin doon kung properly enforced yung mga batas doon. Sila na tumitingin doon kung properly implemented. Okay? Yung mga tungkol sa civil aviation and the air transport. And of course, uh, they say to it na maging safe ito at maging uh, attractive ito upang uh, may promote nila ito sa uh, international trade and tourism. Kasi minsan, yung airport pa lang ay malaking tourism na yan. Say, for example, punta ka sa Hong Kong. Particularly, punta ka sa Singapore. Sa Singur Singapore pa lang. Eh, para ka nang, uh, uh, you are already entertained by uh, the airport alone. No? Ganon yon. Kasi sa airport pa lang, ay pwedeng makapag-welcome na yan or pwedeng makapag-encourage uh, na yan ng mga tourists. And we know that tourists is uh, one of the uh, uh, major sources of uh, income in any government or in any state. So, sa Clark International Airport Corporation, ha? so mayroon tayong Clark International Airport. Now, uh, may mga batas din doon. Okay? So, sila ngayon ang bahala din whether everything is implemented and enforced okay? uh, within the Clark International Airport. So, uh, uh, ginawa na ito na world-class airport na rin at uh, ongoing pa rin ang uh, development ng uh, Clark International Airport. And uh, usually, yan yung secondary airport of choice sa mga Luzon. Pag ma-traffic sa, sa Manila, you have a choice na doon ka sa Clark lumapag if you are coming from other countries or other place para makaiwas ka ng uh, transportation problem sa uh, Manila or NCR. So, you have the Civil Aeronautic Board. Okay, so, uh, it is tasked with regulating, promoting, and developing the economic aspects of civil aviation in the Philippines. And it regulates the lease, the purchase, and sales of aircraft. So, sila ang nag-regulate noon sa pagpapaupa, no, pagbili, pagbebenta ng mga aircraft. At uh, sila rin ang nagsusupervise sa mga laws, okay, and again, uh, whether uh, properly enforced, yung mga merging of domestic uh, air carriers. Na? Sila yon yung Civil Aeronautics Board. Then, uh, you have also the uh, MIAA. 
in Cebu, but it is called the Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority. So kung anong trabaho ng uh, uh, Manila International Airport Authority, ganon din ang trabaho nitong uh, uh, Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority doon sa Cebu. Because uh, the uh, Mactan Cebu International Airport, yan yung tinatawag natin uh, pinaka-gateway sa Central Visayas. Okay? Yan din yung uh, normally nagiging uh, tawag natin na uh, stopover na mga ibang eroplano. So, in charge of operating and maintaining the Mactan International Airport, which is currently the premier gateway to the Central Visayas, and uh, provides airport safety and security, and also implements airport rules and regulations. So, uh, the Philippine Aerospace Development Corporation, from the name itself, Philippine Aerospace Development Corporation. So, uh, they undertake the business and development activities for the establishment of reliable aviation and aerospace industry within the Philippines. So, ito yung mga nagde-design sila. Okay? Sa mga nagde-design, nagmamanufacture. Okay? At nagbebenta ng uh, mga aircraft at nag-de-develop uh, okay? ng local uh, capabilities to maintain and repair and modify the aviation equipment. Okay? So, pag may, may imbento na mga airplane, normally... Uh, sa Philippine Aerospace Development Corporation, uh, yun ang nag-handle niyan. Now, let's move on sa ating road transport. So, what are the agencies under the road transport? You have the Toll Regulatory Board along uh, expressways. So, they supervise and regulate the construction, operation, and maintenance of toll facilities and also responsible for the collection of toll uh, fees created by PD-112 also known as the toll operation decree during the time of Marcos because we have uh, the INLEX already before, the North Luzon Expressway. So, kailangan ma-regulate din okay, yung paglalagay ng mga toll gates and everything ma-enforce yung mga batas sa mga toll gates. So, uh, you have also the Office of Transport Cooperative or the OTC created in 1963 by virtue of Executive Order 898 and was originally known as the Committee on Transport Cooperative. So, pag sinabing cooperative, uh, may mga bus uh, companies na maraming owners. So, nagkikrate sila ng cooperative nila. May kaganda ang cooperative kasi ay uh, binibigyan mo ng kakayahan ang mga taong bayan na magnegosyo at tumulong din sa uh, ating bansa insofar as uh, transportation is concerned. So, their current objective is to integrate the transport cooperatives program into the public transport and transit system so that they can achieve uh, economies of scale with respect to fuel consumption. Kasi pag may mga cooperative na yan, medyo bumababa yung mga presyo. Pag cooperative yan, kasi yung tax nila, hindi ganun kalaki yung tax nila as compared sa mga corporations. And uh, you have also the Philippine National Railways or known as the PNR, matagal na yan, no? Created uh, by the legislation, by a legislation in June 1964 to provide a nationwide railway transportation. Dati mayroong mga mayroong uh, from Divisoria hanggang uh, San Fernando La Union. Okay, so medyo nung panahon ni Cory ay eh, tinanggal ang mga 'yan. Ngayon, they are uh, planning to uh, or mayroon na mga plano at mayroon na mga ongoing construction para mas dadami pa ang railways. Kasi iba pa rin yung railway kasi. Ha? Iba pa rin yung uh, economy nito, iba pa rin yung uh, yung uh, bilis nito. Okay, iba pa rin yung comfort nito as compared sa ibang mga mode of transportation. So, there are currently plans to create new lines connecting the rapidly developing areas in Central Luzon in South Tagalog region with Metro Manila. So, mayroong railway going to uh, to Subic, to Clark, like that, and then to farther north and farther south. So, important yun. Uh, if you go to other countries, talagang active yung kanilang railway station, active yung kanilang subway. Uh, dinidevelop yan kasi malaking tulong yan sa transportation and the economy of a country. At the same time, of course, uh, ang Philippine National Railway, sila ang uh, uh, in charge sa, super, sa supervision and enforcement whatever laws related to uh, the use of the uh, railways. And you have the LRT in Manila. So there is an LRT authority or uh, LRT authority created by Executive Order 603 of uh, 1980 kasi ang mayroon ng LRT nung panahon ni Marcos. Nagsimula na yan. So, uh, para ma-construct, ma-operate, at of course, ma-enforce 
yung uh, mga batas tungkol sa paggamit ng LRT. And uh, nagkaroon ng extension ng LRT from Baclaran in Pasay hanggang sa Monumento in Calaocan. If you have been to Manila, makita nyo ang dami ng LRT doon. Okay, nagsanga-sanga na yung LRT doon. So the mandate has expanded to encompass other light rail projects in Metro Manila. The MRT, no? kasama rin nila yon. So marami na kasing projects doon, marami ng foreigners na pumasok, so napakaraming companies na. So the LRT Authority ang in charge sa enforcement ng lahat ng batas, rules and regulations, kay uh, uh, covering the operations of light rail uh, transits in uh, Manila. You have the North Luzon Railways Corporation or the NLRC or the North Rail created to implement the North Rail project, a major undertaking of the Philippine government which aims to build a fast, reliable, and efficient railway system in Central and Northern Luzon. So, partner ng PNR. The railway system is expected to further enhance the development and growth potential of the aforementioned areas, no? Central Northern Luzon areas, no? So, may mga ongoing projects. Hoping that 10 years from now, or 5 to 10 years ay mangyayaring yan. Malaking bagay yan sa transportation and economy. Then, uh, let's move on sa ating maritime uh, transport. Ano yung mga tatlo agencies doon? Unang-una, you have the Philippine Ports Authority. The primary government agency concerned with the planning and development of the country's seaports. Okay? Sa mga pier. Established in 1974, is a... Uh, it was amended by Executive Order 857. Then, uh, na-expand yung function niya to include now the integration at coordination ng lahat ng mga peers sa buong Pilipinas. Kasi dati, kanya-kanya. Ngayon ay dapat yan coordinated na, integrated na uh, the whole uh, country. Well, of course, ang uh, PPA ay kaakibat niyan ang uh, Philippine Coast Guard din sa implementation ng lahat ng batas Okay, enforcement ng lahat ng batas involving marine transportation. You have the Maritime Industry Authority or the Marina. Diyan kumukuha ng seaman book. No? See the oversee, uh, the promotion and development of the maritime industry and also provides effective regulation of shipping enterprises. Okay? Granted the authority to issue certificate of public convenience or yung franchise na tinatawag permitting the operation of domestic and overseas water sea crafts or sea water carriers. No? Kapag gusto mong magnegosyo ng barko, magbiyahi ka, ay dyan ka kukuha ng franchise mo. So, dyan ka magre-register ng vessel mo, mag issue ng licenses, okay? addressing the safety concerns pertaining to vessel construction. Sir, anong gamit ng PPA? Ang PPA kasi, dun lamang siya sa uh, mga sa port lang, sa mga seaport lang yon. Samantalang ang maritime industry, take note the word maritime industry. Ayan, kapag mayroong, bang, mayroong kang barkong pangingisda na malaki-laki, i-register mo yan. Pag mag-involve uh, ka sa business ng pagtatransport ng tao via uh, uh, marine vessels, dyan ka magkukuha uh, ng franchise at kukuha ng mga licenses. At of course, kasama rin sila sa enforcement ng maritime law. So, you have the Cebu Ports Authority, created through RA 7621 of June 26, 1992. It began its operations and officially took over on January 1, 1996. Okay, took over all Cebu ports. Marami kasi yan sa Cebu. Administer all ports located in Cebu province, thus effectively separating these ports from the Philippine Ports Authority. So, sila ngayon ay tinatawag natin nakahiwalay sa Philippine Ports Authority. Kasi malawak masyado ang Cebu, marami mga islands yan. At uh, sa Central Visayas kasi, ang pinaka-main uh, travel nila dyan ay uh, kalimitan ay yung sa barko. No? Ang mga island-to-island -island, uh, travel. Mas marami yan sa tawag natin sa barko ra rather than airplane. And uh, finally, you have the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy. Okay, just like uh, the Philippine Military Academy. But this was known as the Philippine Nautical School before. Okay, when it was created in 1963 by RA 3680. So, ito yung training ground para makapag-produce ng mga merchant marine officers. Okay, na pang-international ang caliber nila. Ayan. So, uh, ang mga yan ay mga reservists ng Philippine Navy. So, meron silang option kung gusto nilang maging active officer ng Philippine Navy. Pag pumasa sila, pwede. Or magpa-inlist sa 
Navy. O kaya naman, pupunta sila sa tinatawag nating marine industry or sa maritime industry. So, uh, they spearhead the Philippine efforts in international trade and are also capable of serving as auxiliary naval officers during times of conflict. Okay? So, yan ang trabaho nila. So, of course, uh, they are trained for the enforcement of nautical and maritime laws also. Okay? Kasama yan yung mga maritime environmental laws. Okay? So, those are the uh, uh, agencies and uh, some of the functions of uh, agencies under the DND and the DOTR. What about the Bible? Anong sinasabi niya patungkol sa paglalakbay? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, sinabi doon ng ating Panginoos, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. Okay? Kaya sabi niya ng ating Panginoos, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one cometh to the Father except through me. Sabi niya. So, yung tunay na daanan, no? He is the true way. Now, sinasabi doon na sa mundong ito, dalawang uh, daanan, dalawang kalsada ang dinadaanan ng mga tao. Yung isa, malawak. Maraming pupunta doon. At kukunti lamang ang pupunta sa maigsing daanan or sa makipot na daanan. Yung malawak na daanan, din nila alam, yun ang nagkukos ng spiritual death. Okay? Kukunti lamang ang nakakakilala at nakakita ng tunay na daanan ng kaligtasan. Of course, uh, uh, Sabi ng uh, Proverbs 14.12, sabi niya, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Okay, so sa buhay natin, personal na buhay natin, may mga daanan na ikala natin tama, pero sa dulo pala nun ay uh, magkokos ng ating uh, kabiguan. So uh, with that, I, uh, try to uh, pray and understand saan ka nga dapat dadaan sa buhay na ito and even sa mga decision mo sa pang-araw-araw as the Lord na dalhin ka niya sa tamang landas at sa tamang daanan. With that, thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell. Thank you very much and God bless us all.